seven rates of reactions. So first we have the chemical reaction here. So let's take a look. In a, under this subtopic chemical reaction, we have collision theory. Okay, so collision theory is here because in the chemical reactions, the reactants collide each other and then they react, then they form products. So collisions happens. Okay, so now you see the first point, collisions are needed for a chemical reaction to take place. Okay, so how? For example, you see these pictures. Uh, let's say the reactants are the pink color particles and the green color particles. So they collide and then they react, then they form products. So collision happens. Now, second point, successful collisions have enough activation energy at moment of impact to break pre-existing bonds and form new bonds. So the important words here is activation energy. So activation energy is the energy required for a chemical reaction to take place. Okay. So that means when they collide, they cannot just collide uh, with uh, less energy. They must collide hard so that when they collide hard, they can form new chemical bonds. They can break the irrelevant chemical bond and form the products. So activation energy is required. Uh, must have enough energy for collision. Something like, you know, when you study for these subjects, so you must have enough energy, that is activation energy, yeah, to get a good result. So you must study very, very hard uh, to score the exams, something like that. That is the activation energy yeah, for our exams. Okay. Now, rates of reactions. Rates of a chemical reactions is the concentration of reactants used up or product made in a given time. So from here, we get the idea where the rate is the concentration of reactant. Actually, it's the change of concentration of the reactant over the change of time. Or you can also take it as change of concentration of the product over time. So that's the, the formula for rate. Okay. So because of that, the unit is mole per dn cube per second. As you can see, the top of the fraction is concentration. So the unit of concentration is mole per dn cube. The unit of time is second. So you divide this with that. So you will end up with mole per dm cube per second. So if you don't want to write in this way, you just write mole dm minus 3 s minus 1. So this one works also. So that is the unit for rate of reactions. Okay. So uh, let's say I give you one example. Huh? Uh, example, how to use the rate of reaction. So if I have a graph like this, where this is the concentration, this is the time. Okay. So let's say the react reactant reactant type of error. Okay. Wrong spelling. Reactant. So the reactant react and decrease. Okay, decrease. Huh? So let's say initially 1.5 mole per dn cube. Uh, at the end, let's say 0 0.1 mole per dn cube. So it takes, let's say it takes 0, okay, so let's say uh, 0 0.8 second, uh, 0 0.8 second huh, to have this change in concentration. Okay, so you want to find the rate. Change in the reactants. Concentration of reactant, this minus this, to get the change. 1.5 minus 0 0.1. Change of the time, 
from 0 to 0 0.8. So the time involved is 0 0.8 second. So we have 1.4 over 0 0.8. And then we get the rate. 1.4 over 0 0.8. So the rate is 1.75. 1.75 mole per dm cube per second. So that is the rate. Okay. So of course, you can use change of concentrations of products over change of time also to get the rate. Okay. So where uh, we have to understand that for change of products, the graph is going up. Uh, it's going up. Huh? So of course, product is going up basically because initially they don't form product yet. Then during the chemical reactions, they, they form more and more products. So that's why this is zero, zero. And then let's say this point, uh, the concentration here is uh, 1.0. The time here is uh, after 20 seconds. Uh, then you can find the rate also based on the products, the graph of the products. So change in concentration, 1.0 minus zero. Change of time. 0 to 20, so 20 second in morph here. So we have 1 over 20. So 1 over 20 is 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 mole per the n cube per second. So from here you can see this is how we count the rates of reaction, how we use the, the written information here. Okay. Now let's see the next point. Con sure. Uh, yes. So the graphs for the reactant over time will be going down. Yes. And then uh, for product over time, it will be increasing uh, linearly. Yeah, not always linearly. Like it can be curved sometimes. So, but it's product. Product, uh, the graph is always going up. Always going up. Huh? Okay. So linear or not linear depends on the, the stage. Uh, you know, initially it can be linear, after that maybe a curve. Okay. But it is going up for product. Okay, sir. Now we look at the next subtopic, concentration. Uh, so we already know a little bit on concentration, uh, where I said concentration is having the unit of mole per dm cube. Uh, so mole per dm cube, that means concentration is the number of mole divided by the volume. Mole over volume. Okay, so increasing concentration of reactants increases the rate of reactions. Okay, so we have to know how to explain this. Uh, so this is a less concentrated diagram. This is a more concentrated diagrams. So you can see if it's more concentrated, you see more particles in the same volume. More particles. Huh? Okay. So now you see the explanation here. This is because there are more particles per unit volume. More particles, as you can see there. So the collision rate between reacting particles increases. Collision rate increases. Okay, so that means uh, collision rate means they react faster. React faster. Rate means how fast the thing happen. Huh? They react faster. They take less time to react. As they are very close to each other, you know, so they can spend less time to react. Therefore, the successful collision rate increases. Successful collision is the collision that makes products form. So it is getting more so. Okay. Of course, the idea is if collision is more, then the successful collision is more. So if they collide, then the chance of getting a successful collision, which is forming product, is also getting more. So which result in an increased rate of reactions. Okay, so the the explanation is, is there. So the few important words uh, when you explain uh, is 
particle per unit in volume. So this one very important. Right? Whenever we explain based on concentration, so remember to say particle per unit volume. Huh? Particle per unit volume is the representation of concentration. Then uh, collision rate, and uh, then successful collision rate uh, are the important keyword also. Okay. Now, uh, conclusion is the higher the concentration, the higher the rate. Okay, now temperature. So this is the second factor that affect the rate. So they said increasing temperature increases the rate of reaction. And now let's see how to explain this. Uh, of course, the explanation have certain keywords. Uh. Let's see what other keywords. Uh. This is because average kinetic energy. Uh, you see the keyword is different idea yeah? of particles increase so the keyword is average kinetic energy you know the kinetic energy affect the temperature so this one we discussed a few times already uh, so when the temperature is high that means the particle move faster when they are moving faster then at the same time they have more energy also and when you say they have more energy, you have to say the energy is more than or equal to the activation energy. Yeah? So if that is the case, you know, activation energy is required uh, to form products. Then you can say successful collision rate increases and then resulting in increased rates of reaction. So the important one is average kinetic energy and then uh, energy greater or equal to activation energy uh, then successful collision successful collision huh? okay now you can see here this is where the particle move slower this is where the particle move faster when they move faster then they have more energy and then it will result in successful collision rate Okay. So conclusion is, when the temperature is higher, then the rate is higher. Now the next one, particle size. So you have big particles and small particles. Okay. So big particles is like chips. Uh, small particles is like powder. Powder form. Huh? The reactant in powder form, they react faster. So the idea is like, you know, you want to dissolve powder is easier compared to a big piece of uh, solid. So it takes a hard, longer time to dissolve. For example, uh, a big piece of sugar is harder to dissolve compared to a sugar of smaller size. Okay, so it's easier to dissolve. Now, decreasing the particle size is actually increasing the total surface area. Uh, total surface area and hence increases the rates of reactions okay so that means powder form has a higher rate this is because there are more reactant particles exposed to collect exposed to collisions okay so exposed to collision uh, so that means uh, they have a greater surface area so they are exposed to collision so the collision rate increases, successful collision rate increase, increases, resulting in an increased rate of reaction. Okay, so uh, the important word is increase surface area, more reactant particle exposed, then collision rate and successful collision rate. So let's move on to the next page. Okay, so on this page, large surface area can mean danger. For example, flour dust and wood dust have large surface areas and are combustible. A spark from a machine or a lead match 
can cause an explosion. This also applies to gases from mines. Okay, so can catch fire easily. Okay. Now, pressure in gaseous system. So this is the next factor. So you see you have quite many factors that affect the rate of reaction. Huh? Concentration number one, temperature number two, particle size number three, and now pressure in gaseous system number four. So, so basically, um, the smaller the particle size, yeah. it has a greater um, tendency to react. Yes. Yeah. Because it has a large total surface area. Yes, true. Okay, so uh, during exam, I can say that small size particles, right? Small size particle, uh, yeah, okay. Small size particle and come together with large surface area. Okay, sir. And come together as one pair, so which explain each other. Okay, then the next factor, pressure. Pressure is for gas only, gaseous reactants. Okay. So of course, liquid and solid reactants are not affected by pressure. Okay. So the first point, increasing the pressure in a gaseous system increases the rate of reaction. Okay. So reason, you can see it here. If you increase the pressure, so the gas molecules are close to each other. Close to each other, of course, they will react easily. Okay. Now let's see more details here. Increases the rate of reaction. Increasing the pressure increases the rate of reaction. The distance between particles is reduced under pressure. There are more particles per unit volume. So it seems like they use the term for concentration factor, particles per unit volume again. So the collision rate increases, therefore the successful collision rate increases, resulting in an increased rate of reaction. So as you can see, we use the same keyword again, particles per unit volume. Then. Uh, successful collision rate uh, collision rate first collision rate successful collision rate and those are the keywords okay so we have done the, the four factors concentration temperature particle size and pressure pressure is for gas uh, four factors uh, that affect the rate of reaction okay now we look at uh, another situation uh, that affect the rate of reaction, the catalyst. The catalyst. Uh. So catalyst is a substance, usually a transition metal, transition metal, uh, which speed up a chemical reaction, but remain unchanged at the end. Remain unchanged. Remain unchanged means, let's say, for example, the catalyst is iron. So after the chemical reaction, the catalyst is still iron. It doesn't become something else like iron oxide. Okay? It doesn't happen in that way. Eh? If it's iron, then at the end it's still iron. Okay? Remain unchanged. Remain unchanged chemically. But physically, it may change. You know? Initially, the catalyst may be a, a big piece of iron. So after reaction, maybe it becomes powdered form. Okay, it becomes powder form. Physically change, but chemically no. Iron at the end still iron. Now, adding a catalyst increases the rate of reaction. Okay, a catalyst allow the reaction to go by an alternative pathway with lower activation energy. So this is the important one. Alternative pathway with lower activation energy so which means what let's see the graph huh? so without catalyst you have to follow the rate path high activation energy activation energy is from here to the maximum of the graph that's the activation energy 
from the energy of the reactant to the maximum. So without catalyst, you follow the red one. Okay, so we need this much of uh, activation energy. But if you put catalyst inside, the reactants can use the blue pathway where you can see here to here is the activation energy, uh, which is lower than the uncatalyzed reaction. Okay. So lower activation energy, which is this one. Okay. So this is a keyword. Uh. Alternative pathway means the blue path. The blue path. Uh. Yeah, they can follow a new way to react. It's like a shortcut, uh, a shortcut with which safe energy so more particles will have an energy greater than or equal to the activation energy therefore successful collision rate increases resulting in increased rate of reactions uh, so the keyword is here have an have energy greater than or equal to the activation energy because the activation energy is now lower already, eh? so that's why the particles, more particles have enough energy to, to react. And then because of that, successful collision rate increases. Okay, now let's see. For gaseous reactants, if catalyst is solid metal, the catalyst provides a surface for reaction to take place on. Okay, so uh, of course this is called uh, heterogeneous, heterogeneous, huh? so reactions. Okay, so where they have different physical state. So it's something like this, huh? you have a surface provided by the catalyst. So this is the solid. This is the catalyst. Catalyst, huh? catalyst provide a platform, a platform, huh? and then the gaseous. Let's say, for example, uh, the gas molecule uh, NH3. Uh, sorry, N2, uh, N2, uh, nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas. I'm talking about Haber process. Huh? where uh, Haber process, the catalyst is iron. So the N2, the gas, you stick to the catalyst, and then the hydrogen, we also stick to the catalyst. And after that, they break the bond here, and then they form new bond. Then at the end, they form NH3. They form ammonia. So uh, try to imagine in that way. Huh? So the gas and the catalyst, I mean the reactants is gas, but the catalyst is solid. So they have different physical states. So then what happened is uh, we call it absorption. Okay? Absorption. Huh? They absorb, they stick to the surface of the catalyst. The larger the surface are of the metal catalyst, the larger the area for reactions to take place, therefore higher rates of reactions. Okay, so this is for uh, the same situation just now. Enzymes are proteins molecules. So why they talk about enzyme? No? Because enzymes is also catalyst. Enzyme is biological catalyst. So uh, the chemical catalyst is normally the transition metal, but the biological catalyst is the enzymes. So we speed up reaction, but remain chemically unchanged at the end. So enzyme. Huh? Enzyme function best at optimum temperature and pH level. Otherwise, they may denature and completely stop functioning. So of course the optimum temperature is like the temperature of our human body, 37 degrees Celsius. So it 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 functions best. Okay. Now pH depends depends on what kind of enzyme. So certain enzyme need acidic pH. For example, the the enzyme in our gastric juice. 
so that function at acidic pH. Okay, now let's move on. So we are going to discuss through the the way to measure the rate of reaction uh, in a laboratory. Okay, so uh, certain chemical reaction involve the gas evolution. Okay, gas evolve at the end. Uh, gas produced at the end. So for example, zinc plus HCl form hydrogen gas plus zinc chloride. Okay, so from here, uh, try to imagine how we do it. Okay, so zinc is the solid, and then HCl is the uh, the aqueous solutions, aqueous solution. Uh. So they react, then they form hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas, something like this. Okay, so you have a conical flask here. You put HCl, then you put some zinc. Okay, then the gas will form. And the H2 gas is formed. Then you channel it. Okay, channel it to a, a container with water. Okay, then after that you put uh, your burette in inverted. Okay, then of course there, there, there are water here. Uh, water. Okay, so here you close it. Okay, here also we have to close it. Uh, so this is what we call the water displacement method. Huh? Now the gas bubble will come up, the hydrogen gas will come up and then we'll gather up here. Hydrogen gas. And you have to use stopwatch at the same time. Huh? Okay, use stopwatch to, to check the time. And at the same time, you have to check the volume. So they are scaled to, for us to read here. So then you plot the graph. So at one minute, so you check the concentration. At two minutes, you check the concentration. Three minutes, check the concentration, and so on. And then you plot the graph. So, you know, Hydrogen gas here is product. And what I mentioned before, products, the graph go up. You know, initially there, there is no product, so that's why it's zero. Then the products keep forming uh, because these two react. So forming of hydrogen gas is in this way, going up. Uh. They draw a triangle here because this triangle is to measure, we call it uh, to measure the gradient of tangent. Uh and you are measuring the, the instantaneous rate. That means the, the rate of reaction at this particular time. Now let's say here is three minutes. Huh? So you are measuring the instantaneous rate of reaction at three minutes. So that's why you have to count the gradient of uh, tangent. Huh? Okay. So compared to what we see just now, huh? What kind of rate is this? I'm counting the rate also by using this gradient, or I mean like change of concentration or change of time. This is average rate. Average rate is not the, the tangent, uh, not, not using the tangent. Huh? We are using the two points to count the rate. This is called average rate of reaction. So for this case, if you see that it's a tangent there, yeah, this line. Tangent means the straight line that cut the graph at one point. Huh? So if you have the tangent, and then what we measure is instantaneous rate. Okay, now... Um, so, yeah. we have the tangent, so we have to measure instantaneous rate. So, yeah. how to get the point? <laughs> because I'm quite weak in this part. How to get the point so that uh, I can get my calculation? If I'm doing the instantaneous uh, method. Okay, it's something like this, huh? Let's say you have a graph. Then the graph turns this way. 
Okay, so first of all, let's say you want to count the instantaneous rate at the at three minutes. Then you put it here. Okay, then you put your ruler. You have to adjust your ruler until the straight line touch the curve only at this point. Only at this point. You cannot put your ruler too flat or else they will cut the graph at the other point there. You know? So you put your ruler like this, uh, then this is not tangent because the idea of tangent is it must touch the point here. Uh, it must touch the graph only at this point. So you have to put your ruler in something like this. How we know the the tangent is correct? Huh? You see, it's like it's like getting. You see, this this gap is getting closer and closer. Then it closes up at three, and then the gap keep opening after that. And how long are you going to draw a line? My suggestion is you draw until you draw to a point where you can read the value easily. Draw to the point. Huh? Let's say you draw at a point where it stops at five minutes. Uh, so then you can bring down. Uh, let's say here you draw until uh, one minute, for example, and then you can bring down. And then this is five minutes something. You have to read here. Uh, so let's say here is five minutes. The volume of gas is uh, 50 cm cube. 50 cm cube, huh? the volume of gas. And then here, one minute. And let's say the volume is 10. One and 10. Huh? And then you can just count the rate. Of course, you see, because you are using ruler to get the tangent, right? Uh, different student may get different, slightly different answer. So we are not going to worry too much on the the thing because at the end the mark scheme you have range. We have range. Huh? They don't accept only one value. Huh? They will accept value from something to something. Okay, there, there is a range for that. So you want to find the rate, the instantaneous rate. Then you just take fifty minus ten, something like gradient. And uh, five minus one. So that is cm cube per minute. Uh, okay? Cm cube per minute. If you want per second, then you have to change this to second. And then you get uh, 40 over 4. And then you get 10 cm cube per, per minute. So that is the instantaneous rate. The difficult part is setting up the tangent. That's the thing. Okay. Now, so, uh, yeah. So like, um, first I have to like, just find a, on a specific point, I have to draw a line to make a tangent. It should be on the question, like three minutes. Sorry, sir. Can you on the time, based on the time given by the questions. Oh, okay. Um, and then uh, just draw a, like a triangle okay. uh, on the tangent, and then uh, I can get the points like that. At the two point at the end of the line. Yes, sir. Now, the second way to measure the rate of reaction is through mass loss. Mass so loss. First way is uh, the first way is the average of the um, the first way was the average thing that you did, right? Oh, you mean this calculation is it? Yeah. Yeah, this is the average, average yeah. rate. Yeah. Let's say they ask this in exam, I can also follow this, right? Yes. 
just take uh, you know they will ask like find the average rate in the first 0 0.8 second that means from the beginning to so zero. the time lah yeah that gives the time okay so um, and then the second way is the instantaneous um, tangent way instantaneous rate of reactions. Now uh, here we have the second way to measure the rate of reaction. So we call this mass loss. Uh, mass loss. Huh? So mass loss, for example, you are burning uh, alkane, for example, huh? you have uh, C, let's say uh, I create C eight H eighteen. This is uh C eight H eighteen is actually alkane. Eh? Alkane is something like fuel, like petrol or something like that. Okay, you burn it. Okay, you burn it. That means you make it react with oxygen, and then they form uh, carbon dioxide and water. Water. So let's say I balance the equation first. I put here uh, four, four times no eight, eight. Uh. Okay, eight carbon on both sides. Then after that, here is let's say x plus one. Okay, so eight plus. Hydrogen is nine. Okay, then you can count your oxygen. Uh, 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 9 is 16 plus 9 is 25. So 25 over 2. Because here I have 2. Uh, 25 over 2. 2 over 2. Then you get 25 oxygen atom. Uh, so uh, the burning of this alkane. This alkane is known as octane. Uh, burning of octane, you can use mass loss. So imagine the picture is going to be like this. Huh? Uh, so you have the container where you put octane here. Then the octane has a burning up here. Uh, burning. So the burning of this, the obtain is here. Uh, so you can check the mass loss. You can check the mass loss by measuring it with a digital weighing machine or just a normal weighing machine. Uh. Uh, so that works also. So if a gas evolves, measuring loss of if a gas evolve, measure loss in mass per unit time by placing on a balance, then putting a cotton wool on top to allow gas to pass, but not to enter. So that means if if you see the reaction in involve the the pro production of gas. Huh? So what they say is putting a cotton wool on top to allow gas to pass but not to enter. Basically they are trying to say you don't let the CO2 to come back down here. You know? So you let it go away. Okay. So putting a cotton wool on top huh, to allow gas to, to pass. So it's something like your container Depends on your setting, lah, no? So you put cotton wool here, cotton wool. Okay. So then let the CO2 come up, go away. CO2 go away. And then your octane is here. And then you 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 burn straight away. So you put something here to make it burn, huh? Burn. Uh, octane is here. And then cotton wool is here. 
So basically, it's just to let oxygen to go in and carbon dioxide to go away. Uh, so uh, it works also if you put like this. Okay. So based on the notes, it has to be like this. And uh, then you measure it every one minute, for example. Uh, you put, put this on a weighing machine uh, throughout the experiments and you measure the, you, you take the reading uh, of the, the mass every one minute. So after that, you plot the graph. You should expect the graph to go down because you know you, you are burning the octane. Uh, so the mass is going to be lesser and lesser. Uh, so it's going down. So as what we mentioned, the reactants will decrease. Okay. And what is this? This is again the instantaneous rate. You draw a tangent, follow the question, uh, let's say the question one, the instantaneous rate at two minutes. So at two minutes, you find it up and you bring it to the graph, then you draw a tangent, okay. then you count it, uh, count the gradient. Okay. Now, of course, if you count the gradient right at the end, uh, your 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 rate is different, you know, because you see just now the rate for this is uh, cm cube per minute. It's something cm cube per minute. If you are using this, you see here is mass in gram. This is minute, uh, so at the end when you count the rate, the rate is something gram per minute. Okay, then color change. So this is the third way. For example, during the chemical reaction, it changed color from red to colorless. And then you can count the time. Okay, so at this minute, what color you record down? And after one minute, uh, what color? What color? What color? And what color? Okay, at the end, uh, it become colorless. Okay, so let's say it become colorless in in 50 seconds. We count colorless in 50 seconds. Huh? How to count the rate? Uh, so we count the rate like this. Rate equal to 1 over 50. What you need? Uh, second negative 1. Or per second also can. Uh, second negative 1. Huh? Uh, so then it's 0 0.02 second negative 1. Uh, see the unit is different. Huh? Okay, nothing to put on top. Color change, you can't put anything on top. Okay, so that's the thing. Huh? Okay, so we have learned three methods. Uh, the third method is not only for color change. Huh? Certain reaction like, for example, you put a piece of paper, you draw a cross here. And then after that, you put your container on top. Put your container. Your container is made of glass, huh? transparent. Huh? Yeah. So you can use your eye to see the cross. Yeah, yeah. and then there is also a shield, right? Yeah. And, and you can't see the cross, huh? that means after a particular time. Because they form solids. They form solids. Huh? So initially it's clear. After that, you can't see the cross because of the formation of some uh, precipitate or solid. And then you record down the time where the cross disappears. And then one so over. Will they put a shield up or around it? A shield, you mean like something like yeah. this? Uh, yeah. A shield will be used if you are going to block the air from coming. This one's still okay. La. If, if air is blowing, it doesn't really matter. Uh, unless you want to avoid uh, sunlight from affecting the, the cross, uh, then okay. La. You put a shield. Depends on what purpose you are using the shield. Yeah, okay. So normally we use the shield to prevent heat loss or to prevent the blow of wind or to prevent the 
the sunlight from outside to affect the the disappearing of the cross uh, then we use a shield uh, depends on purpose okay so we have done this part uh, let us move on light causing a chemical reaction so when i say light maybe you think of photosynthesis uh, so photosynthesis require light uh, so that is one type of reactions okay so now you see here a photochemical reaction is one where light causes a reaction to occur the higher the light intensity the higher the rate of reaction okay so photosynthesis is one example light provides energy for the reaction and chlorophyll is a dye that absorbs light okay so chlorophyll is the one in the leaf so carbon dioxide plus water uh, photosynthesis by using light from the chlorophyll and then they form products glucose and oxygen okay so this is light of uh, which affect the chemical reaction affect the rate okay so another example is silver salt in photographic films Okay, so uh, what happened is the firms contains silver bromide. Silver bromide, huh? So because of the presence of the light that strikes the firm, the silver Ag plus, because of light, it changed to Ag. It changed to Ag, huh? So once Ag is formed, then the firm, which is black color initially, they become uh, silver color. So you can see some silver color on the firm. Uh, so that is how they make the image. So this is the chemical reaction. Silver bromide becomes silver plus bromine gas. So is it like, like that how the, um, you know, some cameras where they uh, have the film uh, yeah, so that is the uh, old technology. Concept, <laughs> yeah. This concept where they'll get the pictures, right? Ah, uh, yes. So, you know, you have to press, uh, then the light will enter the camera, and then they will change the the NG plus to NG, and then you get the image. Uh, then you have to use that image to get the photo. Uh, so, it's the last generation's technology okay now we seldom use this we use digital camera so which doesn't involve this huh? and this is just for learning purpose okay now we have the next one reversible reactions a reversible reaction is a reaction in which reactants form products and the products can then react or decompose to form the reactants you can see this kind of arrow you know, normally the chemical reaction have this arrow. Huh? This kind of arrow is irreversible. That means the reactant can form the product, but the product cannot go backwards to form reactants. Cannot, huh? irreversible means cannot go backwards. But reversible, the arrow is like this. They can go forward and the product can react and go backwards to form the reactants. So this is the example. CuSO4.5H2O. Oh, what is this? This is crystal. Uh, crystal. Huh? This is the uh, crystalline water. So crystal. So water is there. Then it's blue. But if you remove the water, maybe you heat it up to remove the water, and then the copper two sulfate is not blue anymore, it becomes white powder. Water is formed. Water is released. So if you put water back to the white powder, then they will go backward and form the blue crystal again. So this is called the, the hydrated, hydrated form. And this one is the anhydrous form. 
anhydrous anhydrous salt this is the hydrated salt hydrated means there is water there anhydrous means water is absence uh, so to get anhydrous this one without water heat it you heat it then the water is come out okay and to get hydrated form add water you add water to the anhydrous then they will go backwards to form hydrated form which is the blue piece crystal so there are two types of equilibrium static and dynamic static means stop dynamic means moving still uh, reacting okay, in chemistry yeah? so dynamic in terms of motion is like this is stop this is moving uh, so dynamic equilibrium rates of forward reactions equal to rates of reverse reaction so it means that uh, that means let's say uh, a plus b react to form c plus d so they achieve dynamic equilibrium when the concentrations of all of these the a b c d are same concentration are same huh? okay. when the concentration are same as you can see here concentration of all reactants and products remain constant same concentration when they are same concentration that means they achieve equilibrium and we call it dynamic equilibrium that means reaction still happening it doesn't mean when the concentration is not changing then the reaction is not happening eh? dynamic equilibrium reaction still happening so a plus b continue to form c plus d that is forward reaction so a react with b to form c and d forward reaction is still happening and maybe you're wondering if forward reaction still ha happening it's supposed to have more and more c and d okay and a a and b supposed to be less and less if reaction is still happening eh? but but the concentration remain constant because c and d yeah we react backwards to form a as a and b yeah? at the same rate so we call it rate of reverse reaction so forward reaction happens backward reaction also happens they happen at the same rate and that's why there is no change in concentration okay so reaction is still happening system is closed and on large scale everything is constant so that means the concentration is constant the system is closed that means uh, you don't add something else to it nah, you know system is closed okay. if you add something else to it then the equilibrium is affected for example if you add more water to it uh, then the concentration change already and then uh, it is affected somehow or if you add more c to it uh, then that is not closed system anymore you add more c to it then the equilibrium will change somehow okay now how it change we have the principle here okay the chatelier principle if condition of an equilibrium are changed that means it's not closed system anymore uh, yes so i still don't understand the system is closed and on large scale everything is constant system is closed means you just let a plus b react with c to form c and d you don't add anything from outside that system is closed you don't add water to it or you don't add c or you don't add a or you don't add b or maybe you just don't let, change the pH. so just let um the reaction to like always be uh, a plus b uh, reversible to c and d uh, yes just let these four react 
things to each other. Yeah, you don't put other things to it. That is closed system. And on large scale, uh, large scale means you have to use a lot, uh, no? use a lot. Okay. Use a lot of A, B, C, and D. Uh, so I have to use a lot. Oh, use uh, like more a lot of like in terms of volume and in term, in terms of volume to use a lot of A, B, C, and D. Ah uh, yes, on large scale. Yeah, you don't say that like, I use one uh one drop of this, one drop of this, one drop of this, one drop of this. Uh, then maybe two liter to achieve equilibrium. Uh, so one drop is not enough. Okay, so we have to use more. Okay, so it's something like that. That is closed system. Now we try to disturb the system here. We try to add something and we want to see what happened. So that's why we have this principle. The Chatelier principle if condition of an equilibrium are changed, the position of equilibrium move to oppose change. So what I mean by the position of equilibrium move? Huh? So they either move to the left or move to the right. Okay. Position of equilibrium either move to the left or to the right. So how we know it moves to the left or right? The principal never say anything. They just say it move. So the idea is you have to move in a direction that oppose change. Uh, oppose change. Huh? What do you mean by oppose change? For example, if you affect the system by changing the temperature, temperature lowered. Uh, so let's say they are reacting at room condition. You put them in freezer. Okay, you put them in freezer and temperature is lowered. Equilibrium move in exothermic direction. So the equilibrium will move in exothermic direction where heat is released through the chemical reaction. So why heat is released? Because they want to oppose the change. You put in a freezer. It's very cold, then they release heat through exothermic reaction. So they go exothermic direction. Where is exothermic direction? It depends on the chemical reaction. Let's say, for example, uh, A plus B become C plus D. Then they give you delta H is positive X kilojoule per mole. So if you see positive X, uh, that means this is endothermic, endothermic reaction. And it also means forward reaction is endothermic. That means A plus B from C plus D is endothermic. And we have to take it in the other way around. If it is react backwards, then it is exothermic for backward so from here we understand something if you lower the temperature equilibrium move in exothermic direction which is to the left for this case okay. if temperature raise equilibrium move in endothermic direction so why they move in endothermic? It's just to oppose the change. Let's say they are reacting. So, yeah. Oppose okay. is like to prevent the change, right? Yeah, to prevent the change. To, to resist, I like that. Yeah, resist the change. Okay. So, let's come back to our example here temperature race. They are reacting at room condition and you go and heat it up. If you heat them up, they will move to a direction which is endothermic. You know, endothermic is forward, huh? so they move to the right. They move to the right. Huh? They form more C and D, which 
make endothermic happen. Endothermic means they absorb heat. Okay. So you heat it up, then they absorb the heat to avoid overheating. So that is to oppose the change. Of course, you have to understand also, sometimes, uh, let's say you have P plus Q become R plus S. Sometimes they give you delta H to be a negative value. Let's say negative Y kilo joule per mole. So it means exothermic. Negative means exothermic. Eh? But remember also when it is forward reaction. Forward reaction, exothermic. So forward reaction, exothermic. If you pull it in the other way, backward reaction, then it is endothermic. Endothermic or backward. Backward reaction. So for this case, if you increase the temperature, then they move backward. For this case, if you increase the temperature, they will move forward. So it depends, huh? left or right, depends on equation. Uh, depends on reactions. Okay, now let's see the second situation, pressure. You increase the pressure. Pressure is for gas only. Huh? For gas. For gaseous reactant and products, for example. Okay, so if you increase the pressure, equilibrium move to side with fewer gas molecules. So let's say example, huh? we have a uh, Haber process, nitrogen plus hydrogen become ammonia. Okay, let's balance the equation. So I put two here and here three. 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 3 is also 6, 2 nitrogen, okay, it's balanced. So you count the mole on the left, 4 mole. 1 from nitrogen, 3 from hydrogens, 2 moles on the product side. Okay, so if I increase the pressure, you know, 3 of these are gas, huh? gas, gas, ammonia is also gas. I increase the pressure. So based on the information given here, equilibrium move to side with fewer gas molecules. Fewer, that means go to the right because right hand side has less number of mole. Increase pressure, then they will make forward reaction happen because forward reaction has fewer number of mole. So how it opposes the, the change? You know, when they get the mole decrease, yeah, when forward reaction happens, from four mole of this and this, it becomes two mole of this. The mole decrease. Mole decrease then pressure will decrease. That is how the change is opposed. You increase the temperature, you increase the pressure, then forward reaction happen, the number of mole decrease, then the pressure will drop, which oppose the changes. Okay, so pressure lowered, equilibrium move to sides with more gas molecules. That means if you lower down the pressure, then they go backwards. The more increase, uh, then the pressure will increase. That oppose the change. So maybe you're wondering if I have the reaction involves solid and gas, what should what should I do? For example, let's say uh, let's say for example uh, calcium carbonate. It's a solid. Then it becomes calcium oxide, which is also a solid. 
plus carbon dioxide, which is a gas. So uh, when you have this situation, you just look at gas only, huh? no gas, solid only. For this side, calcium oxide is solid, not counted. Carbon dioxide is gas, so one. Zero to one. So in this case, if you increase pressure, Based on the word, pressure raise, equilibrium move to side with fewer gas molecule. Fewer gas molecule is to the left. So uh, backward, backward reaction. More decrease, more of gas decrease. Huh? then uh, pressure will decrease and that is how that opposed the uh, changes okay now concentration decreasing reactant con concentration how to decrease uh, add water you add water then the concentration decrease okay so or increasing product concentration yeah, add more powder, add more powder to the products. Okay, then uh, equilibrium move to reactant sites. Okay, so uh, how are we going to take it? Uh? Let's see one example. If you have A plus B become C plus D, you decrease the reactant concentration. Decrease reactants. Uh, how to oppose the change? The reaction should go backward so that they form more A and B. Backward reaction form more. Form more A and B. And after that, the A and B increase in its concentration. So that opposes the change. You know? It decreases the concentration of reactants, then all this happens, and then the concentration of A and B is increased back. That is opposed the change. Uh, if you increase the product concentration uh, so what happened uh? you see i put in blue color c and d you increase the concentration of products okay so if they have too much products uh, then backward reaction happen also okay what is the common sense over here the common sense must be opposed to change huh? when there are too much product they go backwards so that the product is used up. Okay. C and D are used. So C and D decrease. And that is how they oppose the change. You increase it at the end, you have to think of how to decrease it. Okay. So that is oppose the change. Okay. So you have to build up this common sense to figure out huh, whether they move to the left or move to the right. So this is the other way around. Increasing reactant concentration or decreasing so, product. Ah, yes. When, let's say, like this example, we have to go to the bad backward reaction in order to increase A and B again. Yeah. So wouldn't it be like equilibrium after the increase of A and B? They will achieve new equilibrium. Okay, sir. Yeah. They are like, you know, you achieve, they achieve equilibrium already. Then you go and 
decrease the concentration of A and B. Then backward reaction happen, they form more A and B. A and B is now increased and they achieve new equilibrium, I guess. Then why so said uh, like we have to um, we have to like decrease C and D to like achieve uh, to make it same. Uh. Increase C and D. Initially, you increase C and D. Disturb the system. Increase C and D. You increase more product. You increase the concentration of product. Okay. So, yeah. if you increase the concentration of product, then you have to go to... You have to, like... So when like you increase the concentration of product, then the A and B will become lesser. So in order to make everything the same, we have to go to we have to increase A and B by decreasing C and D. Is it what you're explaining, sir? Is that is it like that? What you say is when you increase C and D, yeah. yeah. Some you not decrease, huh? Yeah. C and D, then they go backwards. Of course, they form more A and B, I know. They form more and more A and B at the end. But the main concern is the C and D will decrease at the end. So now you see, I say C and D decrease. And our focus is oppose the change. This is the increase of C and D. So how to oppose the change? Backward reaction has to happen to make the amount decrease. Okay. So backward reaction means it has to be like the C and D is increased. So backward reaction is to um, to increase the A and B in order to get C and D decreased. Yes, correct. Okay, so the U not the C and D. Yeah. Okay, understand. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Then this last part is the other way around. Just now decrease the reactant. Now increase the reactant. Just now increase the product. And now decrease the product concentration. Equilibrium move to product side. Just now equilibrium move to reactant side. Now equilibrium move to product side. It's just the other way around. Uh, so this thing I don't need to explain. Uh, just the other way around only. Uh. Okay. So the conclusion is no matter which factor we are talking about, you must use a common sense, which is to oppose change. Uh, to oppose change. Huh? If temperature increase, try to make temperature drop. If pressure increase, try to make pressure drop. If concentration of reactant increase, try to make concentration of reactant drops. Uh, so oppose the change. And then the common sense should build up afterwards. Okay, so and finish. Okay. So we are going to use these questions. So we discuss through the first question together. So let's take a look. When aqueous sodium thiosulfate. Sodium thiosulfate is this one, Na2S2O3. And dilute hydrochloric acid, so which is HCl, are mixed. A precipitate of insoluble sulfur is produced. So which is this one, the sulfur solid. So it's a yellow, sul yellow solid. Sulfur is yellow color. Huh? Okay, then. There are other products also. 
the time taken for the cross to disappear from view is measured. And so imagine you see it from top, you see the cross because initially the aqua solution is colorless. So they form the yellow solid and at the end you can't see the cross anymore. So the moment the cross can't be seen, you stop your timer. So a student adds the following volumes of aqueous sodium thiosulfate, dilute hydrochloric acid and distilled water to the conical flask. So you can see yeah, different volume and the time. Okay. Now experiment one, you see uh, 10, 10, 40, 56. Experiment two, you can see the put 20 and they put less water. So that means you should expect uh, concentration is higher. So if the concentration is higher, then the rate is faster, then the time to make the cross disappear is shorter because they form the sulfur quickly. Okay, so the time taken for the formation of the precipitate of precipitate uh, formation of the precipitate of sulfur to make the cross disappear from view is recorded. So these are the time. State the order in which the aqueous sodium thiosulfate hydrochloric acid and distilled water should be added to the flask. So that means they want you to say out which one to put first and which one to put second and which one to put, put at the end. Okay, so Okay, there are many ways. One of the way is uh, there is a general concept. Uh. General concept is you don't let this and this to react first, you know. So you must get ready. You must get ready with the, you know, you have to dissolve with distilled water first, for example. Uh, then only you let this and this to react. So you cannot put this followed by this, or you cannot put this followed by that straight away. You must, you must add water first. Uh, so you must add water to, to dilute them first before they react. Okay. So one of the way is, first you put sodium thiosulfate. Sodium thiosulfate. Huh? If you're for, if you're lazy to write, just write Na2, Na2S2O3. And then you dilute it first. Distilled water. You don't let, you don't let it react first. Huh? You dilute with water first. Uh, distill, distill water. If you are lazy to write distill water, just write H2O. Uh, then only you add HCl, hydrochloric acid. Uh, so once you add HCl, they will immediately react ready. And then you have to start your timing. Okay. So of course, you can put HCl followed by water, then only followed by sodium thiosulfate. Uh, can also. Or you put water first, followed by sodium thiosulfate to dissolve it, to, to dilute it. And then only you put HCl. Uh, so, no matter how, the idea is make these to meet up at the end, okay, at the end. Huh? Don't let them react when 
the distilled water is is not is not used. You can use, you can make them react after the distilled water is used. Okay, so let's see B. In experiment three, the student wanted to wanted the sodium thiosulfate to be double the concentration used in experiment two. Double. Huh? Complete the table to show the volume which should be used and the expected time taken for the cross to disappear from view in experiment three. Okay, so you want the concentration to double. Um, we can use first. This one you don't change anything. Okay. So it's the sodium thiosulfate. Okay. Now you use 20 and 30. 20, 30, 10. Give me one minute. see how to double the concentration so you see concentration concent, concentration equal to mole over volume mole over volume huh? okay so um, at experiment two uh, how many more? We don't know. Lah. Let's say I just call it X. Lah. Okay, I just call it X. Lah. But volume, you know, volume is 20 plus 10 plus 30. So the volume is 60. 60 cm cube. Okay, experiment 3. Uh, this is experiment 2. Now experiment 3. You want the concentration to double. Uh, you want the concentration to double. Huh? So maybe you're wondering, can I just double this volume? Or not? So if you double this volume, let's see. Huh? If you double this volume, 40, right? Then you should expect the mole to be double. 2x. Two 2x, two huh? OK. If this is 2x, it doesn't mean the concentration is double. Huh? You must be careful. Huh? Uh, so this is x over 60. If, if your thing is 2x over 60, uh, then it's double. 2x over 60, you know, that is double. Mathematically, you can see that. So for that case, if you want 2x over 60, uh, this you use 40 to make it 2x. Now volume has to control at 60, you know. 40 plus 10 plus 10, uh, we will end up with 60. Uh, so that's the thing. So because of that, the time taken for the cross to disappear will be half of the time. Uh, because the concentration is double, right? The rate is double. Uh, so the time is half okay so uh, you fix the volume to 60 and you increase the mole the double uh, so this is a technical question uh, so must be careful have to think 
Now we look at B part two. Use collision theory to explain why increasing the concentration of sodium thiosulfate would change the rate of reaction. This is easier, right? Concentration and rate. Huh? Okay, so this is what we discussed just now. So I just write the answer. The main keyword more particles per unit volume. One point. Second point increases the rate of collision. Like that. Okay, now I look at C. The student repeated experiment one at a higher temperature. Use collision theory to explain why the rate of reaction would increase. So this is also not hard because we discussed just now. Uh, temperature, always talk about the average kinetic energy. Okay, so, and the activation energy also. Huh? Okay, so, particles F Uh, greater average kinetic energy okay then uh, the average kinetic energy yeah so more Articles have energy equal or greater than activation energy. Okay, then at that point. increases the rate of collision okay so that's how we explain it huh? so this this collision theory is not a problem just need to memor memorize it then you can just easily write down the answer Okay, now let's see more questions. Okay, so let's look at question two. Hydrogen can be manufactured from methane by steam reforming. Methane, CH4, plus steam, carbon monoxide, hydrogen gas. Okay, we want to get the hydrogen gas. The reaction is carried out using a nickel catalyst at temperature between 700 degrees Celsius and 1100 degrees Celsius and using a pressure of one atmosphere. The forward reaction is endothermic. Endothermic, yeah? so that means you should expect delta H to be a positive value. What value? We don't know. Okay. So what is meant by the term catalyst? So catalyst, you have to memorize the definition. So it's a substance. That will lower the activation energy Yes. Over the activation energy, you get one mark, don't you? Uh, so this is a two marks question. Huh? They need one more point. Okay. 
so that increase the rate. Uh, so this is another one. Increase the rate. Second, second point is the point that you say by during the activation energy. I also think how about alternative pathway. Uh, if you write that alternative pathway, you get the a mark as the second point. Okay, so. B, uh, suggest two reasons why a temperature lower than 700 degrees Celsius is not, is not used. So they say use temperature 700 to 1010. Uh, why we don't use less than 700? So you may say too slow. Too slow, huh? You know, when the temperature is low, then the rate is lower, so too slow. This is about the rate. Okay, the second point, you see, as, as you can see here, is two point. Huh? Which means it's about if the reaction is will, will happen slowly, when the temperature is lower than 700 degrees C. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so that is under the first point. Uh, yes. The second point, you talk about the yield. The yield means the amount of products. Amount of products that you are going to get. If you use lower temperature. The yields will be produced also lower. You will go we produce lower because they go backward. Temperature is low, then they go exothermic direction, which is backward. So lower you give uh, more details or not up to you. You can say lower you because equilibrium shift to the left or backward reaction happens. Okay, so but that is not compulsory. C suggest one advantage of using a pressure greater than one atmosphere. So you see here they say one atmosphere. Now if you use greater than one reaction occurs faster. Uh, that's one is advantage of the thing that you may you uh, may say Imagine one atmosphere come on its own, our surrounding from one atmosphere. So if you are using more than one, then you use your machine to press harder, use up electricity, and hence higher cost. Okay, sir. Then e. Hydrogen can also be manufactured by electrolysis. The electrolyte is concentrated you see it is the chapter six now huh? the electrodes are inert the product of electrolysis are hydrogen chlorine and sodium hydroxide so let's let's uh, imagine uh,
So what come here, you know, this is positive. Huh? This is negative. So what come to this inner electron is the negative ion, Cl minus, OH minus, and A plus, H plus. So the H plus and OH minus are from water. Okay. So now for concentrated case, which N ion are going to be chosen to form products. So you have to remember that. Okay. Chloride or hydroxide. Uh, so you have to know. So chloride. Yeah, chloride. Eh? You know when it's concentrated, we choose halogens to form products. Chloride. Okay. So out of these two, which is going to form product? Sodium and uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. Because although Na is in high concentration, but Na is too reactive, so they cannot form product. Okay. So hydrogen ion is going to form H2. Chloride is going to form Cl2. What remain is this two, uh, Na plus and OH minus. Uh. So that's why they said sodium hydroxide is also a product. Uh. That is the remaining here. Uh, chlorine, hydrogen. Uh, so three products. Okay, so part one, define the term electrolysis. Uh, so electrolysis, the definition. Break down of an ionic compound when molten or aqueous. Solution by using electricity. So this is one point. This is the second point. Okay. So of course, uh, my suggestion, uh, you gather up the definition. So whenever, whenever you do past paper, you get definition, you just copy down in your notes. Then you memorize it last minute. Okay, now part two. Name a substance that can be used as the inner electrode. So any suggestions? What can we use as inner electrode? Um. Carbon. 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 Or you can also call it graphite. Carbon graphite is the same thing basically. Yeah? Or the other option is platinum. Now part three, write an ionic half equation for the reaction in which hydrogen is produced. So ionic means you have to see ions uh, in the equation so because of that the ion h plus must be given and the react with electrons then they form hydrogen gas h2 then we balance the equation where is hydrogen produced in the electrolytic cell so we already discussed huh? it's here so you have to remember the name of this thing. So this is the cathode or negative electron. So you can call it cathode. You can also call it negative electron. Okay. Describe a test for chlorine. Chlorine. Huh? So you see you get chlorine here. So how we know this gas is chlorine? Okay, so uh, you can use litmus paper. 
you know, chlorine is acidic. Huh? So you use them blue litmus paper. So an acidic gas will turn the litmus paper to red. Okay. So we we'll turn it to red, huh? but you know, chlorine has bleaching agent, bleaching properties also. Huh? So it turns to red and then at the end, it will turn to white. Okay. So result, uh, turn to red because acidic and then turn to white at the end. So you can straight away write, uh, turns to white. If you do it in two steps, it's okay also. You say turn to red and then turns to white. So I put a remark here. It has a reaching properties. Uh, I, I hope you remember something like chlorine react with water. Uh, so that will form HClO, uh, which has the breaching properties. HClO. So it's this one that causes the breaching. Then we look at F. The electrolysis of concentrated aqueous sodium chloride can be represented by the following word equation. Sodium chloride, water, sodium hydroxide, hydrogen, chlorine. Construct a chemical equation to represent this reaction. Do not include state symbol. Okay, that will be easier. You just change this to chemical symbol. And then CL. H2O, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, hydrogen is H2, and then chlorine is Cl2. Okay, now we have to balance it. So you see sodium is balanced. We look at chlorine, Cl2 on the right, Cl on the left. So we put two to balance it. And now the sodium is not balanced, two sodium. So we balance with sodium. Okay, now we count the hydrogens, two hydrogen, another two from here. So we have four hydrogens on the right. So we put two here to balance the hydrogen. Two times two is four. Oxygen also two. So the equation is now balanced. Okay, so G, state one use of chlorine. Okay, chlorine. Uh, one of the famous use is to to kill bacteria in swimming pool. Huh? Uh, so that is kind of famous. Okay, treating water in swimming pool. Another famous use is. Uh, Bleach. Chlorine is used to make bleach. Uh, so to bleach the, the cloth and so on. Sodium hydroxide. There are so many use. Uh, one of the famous use is in making soap. Uh, so this is kind of famous. If you feel like, oh, I never heard of this. Uh, another important use is to make uh, drain cleaner. Uh, drain cleaner. Uh, drain cleaner. So hydrogens. Hydrogen, uh, the famous use is rocket fuel. Rocket fuel. If you feel like rocket fuel, I don't know. Uh, any other option? Uh, manufacture of ammonia, Haber process. So, menu, you use the example that you are familiar with uh, manufacture of ammonia. 
that is the Haber process, uh, N2 plus H2 become ammonia. So H2 is used. 